purpose of this space is to create a very safe environment for people to share a moment of their lives. Matatagpuan sa 104 and 138 na may higit sa tatlong daang sasakyan, brand new and pre-owned, ay pwede niyong pagpipilian. Bago pa ka sa bansa, wala ka pang credit score, walang problema. Marami kaming selection from all makes and models and all trade-ins are welcome. Higit pang informasyon sa surimitsubishi.com Located one block north of St. Paul's Hospital, Downtown Denture Center features complete and partial teeth restoration options. With 35 years experience, Anthony Chung offers mobile services and emergency repair consultation 24 hours a day. Downtown Denture Center, just off Nelson at 970 Burrard in the lobby of the Electra Building. Foodie World has 75,000 square feet of imported and domestic products with a large selection dedicated to our Filipino kababayans. With an in-house butcher, variety of seafood, and produce from around the globe. Open every day until midnight. Foodie World, one block east of number three road off Sea Island Way in Richmond. Centrally located in the Richmond Auto Mall since 1984, Richmond Honda features a large selection of Honda certified pre-owned vehicles Inside the showroom, Honda's newest models are displayed for viewing, and the dealership is staffed seven days a week for financial consultation. All the stories that you're going to hear tonight are personal in nature, some of which can encroach on dark topics as addiction, abuse, self-harm, and you may get triggered by them. And if you do, there is a beautiful lounge to the back of XY that you can go down, chill out, get your composure. When you're ready, you can come and join us. Welcome to my story. My, name's, my name is Winston Young, and I'll be your host for tonight. That's my favorite part of the, the whole show right there. One of the fundamental reasons why I'm creating this space is to pro provide an opportunity for people to share their story. And when I say people, regular people, people that would normally not have thought that their story uh, would want to be heard by other people, people that don't have to have like a, you know, how many times have you spoken on stage before I give you an opportunity? It's like, that, that, that's not the criteria that I want. I want the people that are in the wings, I want the, the grandmother that has experienced 60 years of life, who has just wondrous stories inside that head, but never believed that anyone wanted to listen. So this space is for those people. And from that, I invite all of you to take advantage of this space, because I created it for you. I didn't create this for me. I can sit here and talk about myself all the time. and edited it to perfection, but it, it doesn't mean anything because it's just my story. And to get 10,000 stories off this stage or on, off a page requires a lot of participation from a community. So I, I would like to ask, how, how many of you out there have uh, children? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't. Um, it's not like I haven't practiced. And uh, if, I, if I do, I, I don't know about them. One day if they show up, it's like, okay, hey, hey, cool. You know, it's a little, little kid in a little mirror ball hat. It's like, hey, it works for me. But my understanding of the birds and the bees, my understanding of procreation, it, 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 from, from what everyone tells me, it's something that you have to take seriously because you can just sneeze on somebody and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're halfway to fatherhood. And to, to me, that's, uh, that's scary. That's how I was raised. But I've been told that there's actually a side to that, uh, to that 
simple premise that we're not aware of. And so tonight, I invite Matt Boer to the stage to share and give us a glimpse into that other side of life. Thanks, Winston. Yes, making a baby is easy. That's what we're led to believe when we grow up. As boys, we're told to keep it in our pants. Uh, you know, be careful. Don't make somebody, don't get somebody pregnant. Um, and I actually haven't told, I don't even know if I've told anybody this, but in my raising, my father said, if I did, I was kicked out of the house, right? So hearing those messages, you kind of think exactly what Winston was saying is like, man, you just kind of, if it's out there, it's someone's gonna, it's gonna happen. So you don't expect what comes next. And before I go into that, I have, Two disclaimers. One is the fact that you may be uncomfortable because I'm going to talk about, you know, either bodily parts or fluids, perhaps. And the second is to explain this shirt. So in preparation for this talk, I, similar to Winston, had put out to the universe that I wanted a new shirt. And then I went out and I was looking at a few stores and, you know, wasn't really seeing anything. And then I saw this shirt, which wouldn't be my first choice. But on this shirt, there are pineapples. And pineapples are kind of a fruit of infertility because they have bromelain, and bromelain assists with uh, inflammation. So if there's inflammation of the uterus, then it's going to assist with that. So I wear this shirt, and that's probably why my partner's not here, actually, because I'm wearing this shirt, but uh, as a sign of infertility in, in the uh, pineapple. So if you see that, or if you maybe have a friend going through that, a pineapple would be a symbol to, uh, to give to them. So l like couples, you kind of go through a point where you decide if you're going to have a kid. And obviously, if that's of interest to you, you should find somebody that wants one as well. So I was fortunate enough to, to, to have that. And what a wonderful setting when we decided to start. We were in Paris, France. And, you know, prior to that, you kind of go with, are you having, when are you going to have kids? And it goes to, well, we're not not trying, right? I mean, we're kind of just, if it happens, right? But no, Paris, France, we were trying. This was it. And all all, all uh, pedal to the metal, sort of speak. And... You know, despite many attempts, um, unsuccessful. So you go through and you go along with that for a little while, and then the game changes. Now you have to start getting tested. Now you're getting blood work, and you're going giving urine samples and semen samples and, and all this sort of stuff to find out if there's something wrong with you or what might be able to assist you in the process. And in that, you discover a whole lot about you and about your partner, right? And so we were diagnosed with the lovely unexplained infertility. It is the virus of fertility, right? When you go to the doctor and you're like, you feel like crap death and you're just like, what is going on with me? And they go, that's a virus. Just go home and good luck with that and lots of fluids and so on and so forth. So unexplained infertility is exactly that. It's, they can't explain it. The tests come back, everything's fine. Guys are working, parts are good, tubes are clear, right? All that good stuff and it's not happening. So then they suggest that you go on further and try a little bit longer, the natural way. So you do that and after about a year, they give you your options. One of those options is What's something called IUI. I refer to it, so I'm going to kind of have a male language for, and when I say male language, I say my language, this male. And IUI to me is what I refer to as the turkey baster. So you give your sample and then they kind of shoot it up a little further than, than you might yourself. And, you know, let's be honest, the guys aren't asking for directions. So the closer you get them to the destination, it's probably a good thing. So they go that route and unsuccessful. So you try that maybe again, and maybe again, and maybe again. 
And each of those come with a cost. And that's financial. That's not talking about the emotional toll that's going on for someone who's questioning their body, questioning their dream, questioning whether they're going to actually have this happen. And you get to a certain point and you say, you know, what's next? And what's next is, is IVF. So I'm going to move through the process a little bit because not, I, I'm looking, looking in the crowd and I see some males, but not tons. So I'm going to assume that most of you haven't been in what we refer to as the room before. So you go into this place in the fertility clinic and it's this room. So as a male, you kind of walk in and you're like, okay, we have a chair, we have a sink, we have a mirror. Not sure if that's going to come in handy or not, but... <laughs> We have a couple of magazines in case someone who's like 50 or 60 who's going to like try and have a kid here or something or can't work the iPad. <laughs> so you go in and now you make your decision on how you're going to go about your business, right? Make that decision. And I'm kind of preparing myself and realize that the chair is about that far away from the door where this gentleman's sitting. And I'm thinking... Whatever I put on here, even if it was music that was going to work for me, someone just walking in that hallway is going to hear that. <laughs> so once I learned that, you make your adjustments and you bring Bluetooth <laughs> and you get it set up. So now it doesn't matter what you're playing on that, you're going uh, to be okay. You go through your little world and then same thing, you're filling out this form and it's like, you know, did you get it on <laughs> or whatever? <laughs> I don't know what's happening in this place. If it's a someone has in there or what but it's like you know what percentage 100 percent 80 percent 50 percent fill that out a time you know what time was it when you went in when you when you didn't I actually had a funny story um, I, I was working on being not being competitive for a long time and I found myself in this room and by this time it had been like I don't know like five times I've been to this room or whatever so I have my I have my system and my setup going on, and I go in, I put my things down there and get everything set up, and then I hear the door close beside me. So some other guys beside me. So I'm still getting set up or whatever else, and I don't think it was five minutes, and the bell rang. And ding! What? What's happening here? The guy just like finished, he just got in there, he just finished. So then the, your like competitive juices start going, right? <laughs> Anyway, this isn't the survival of the fittest, but uh, if it was, he might, have, uh, he might have won that one. You know, you sit there in this room of people, not much different than this, they're all waiting for appointments, you know? And at first you kind of have this thing of like, wow, we're all, we're all kind of in this together. And then part of you kind of goes, but wait a second, if this is a stat thing, if you're successful, then I'm not, you know, possibly, right? Because if it's a, it's a number. So... Speaking of numbers, one in six. In Canada, it's one in six couples go for infertility. In the UK, it's one in seven. In the States, it's one in eight, right? So just look around this room and, you know, there'd definitely be a handful of people that could be in for that, right? So part of the reason that I felt this story was important is because you get people that they, they meet early, maybe in their mid-20s or 30s or so on and so forth, and they kind of have this plan to have kids go back to that initial statement and it's, you think it's that easy and then it's not. So, you know, the planning component and finding out some of these things would be very valuable. So I'll move back to the process now that we move to IVF. When you go to IVF, from a male partner perspective, you basically have just signed up to be a nurse, a chauffeur, a coach, a cheerleader. You're a variety, a counselor. Uh, psychologist, a variety of things, right? And, you know, you, <laughs> you go to the meetings and you listen and you get told how to give a needle and heaven forbid your partner is afraid of needles, which mine was. So how do you make that better? You know, I'm, I don't know. Well, I didn't know, but I tried to do some things like distract her. So when it was needle time, I did my best version of Little John, and I'd be like, shot, 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 shot. And then she'd be like, okay, okay, it's quiet, quiet. You know, then I give the shot. So in a process of 10 days, I'm basically giving her 30 shots. 
sexy, right? Like, that's like sexy. You're getting like bruises from, you know, all the needles and everything like that. You know, so that's one stage. And then you're waiting and there, you know, sh meanwhile, she's going to the doctor every two days and getting tests and, you know, all that good stuff. And then you wait for the day that you give a, a trigger shot and the trigger shot's going to like release the eggs kind of thing, right? And then eggs go out and then a few days later, they're going to go and retrieve them. So then it's what I call the Petri party. So the Petri party is take my guys live, take her eggs, put them in a Petri dish and let them party, right? See if they like meet up and have a good time and make some embryos. And then again, you wait, go through that process and you find out were you successful. So again, just numbers wise, just to give you an idea of our, our, our situation, our first retrieval, we basically had 16 eggs, right? So context-wise, that might not mean anything, but it gives you 16 chances to be successful. Out of that, 12 are mature. Out of that, eight were embryos. Out of that, two were good enough to transfer. So you have to make a decision. Are you willing to have twins? Because if you transfer two and you're successful, you have twins. If not, you know, you're given a one shot, so on and so forth. So we're into this process. So we say, yeah, we're going to do. The first day we get the phone call. And actually, no, this is the worst, worst case scenario is nowadays they have online. <laughs> you can check your stuff online, right? So she goes for the blood test, comes home. We decide we're going to do this thing together. We're going to, you know, log in and so on and so forth. Log in. I'm looking at, these, looking at the screen, looking at the numbers. I don't know really what I'm looking at because I haven't been doing as many blood tests as she has. And I look back and she's bawling. And I'm like, oh my God, like, is that is good, bad? Like, what happened? She's like, we are, we are, we are. And I'm like, oh my God. So, so emotional, right? Like, finally, finally. Next day we get a call. We're sorry about that. You're like, You're sorry about what? Like, well, the number's not high enough. What do you mean the number's not high enough? It's like, well, it needs to be about 50, we're at like 19. So I was like the guy from Dumb and Dumber, and it's like, have you ever had it like at 19? Like, are you saying there's a chance here, you know? And she's like, well, it, I can't really say, I said, okay, so there's a chance, right? And so we, we move forward. We're gonna do a test in another couple days. A Couple more days go by, the numbers are up. So now we are, right? That's exciting. So then a couple more, another test, another couple days, the numbers go up again. So this is fantastic. So now we're officially, we're pregnant, right? And that's fantastic. Except for 10 days go by, you do another test and you're not. So that's basically considered a miscarriage, which isn't covered in a bereavement component at all, right? So you're just expected to suck that up and go back to work and live life. So sometimes people ask like, where have you been? What have you been doing? And it's like, um, on a journey with infertility and we're doing the best we can. We're managing our energy and, you know, sometimes that means you're not doing the same things that you used to, right? So I wanted to finish with, because um, this is a long story, it could, it could be probably like a five part story. I wanted to finish with, um, for people that might be on that journey, little advice. Came up with an acronym and the acronym is PEACE. So the P is for patience and persistence, because you're gonna need that. You know, patient with the process, patient with your partner. Persistence, of course, is not giving up. You never know when it's gonna happen. E is for both empathy and energy. Managing your energy is key in this process. You know, you might have to let go of things that you just did naturally but now it's, you don't have the same, same energy that you did before. A is adaptability, and that is your plan, maybe the way you eat, the way you live, the way you socialize, you're adapting all of these things, your routines. C is communication. Communication with your partner is gonna be massive, and sometimes that means you know, other people don't get communicated with, but your partner is gonna be key. And E is for extra. Extra sleep, extra self-love, 
extra meditation, extra space. So for all of those on the journey who don't yet know that they will venture on the journey, and to those that have and will support those on a journey, peace be with you. Matt Boyer, everyone. First Rate Motors features two acres of previously owned vehicles available for viewing every day. First Rate Motors, 15685 Fraser Highway in Surrey. My name is Jeevan Bath. Suki Bath has been selling quality pre-owned vehicles for 37 years. All of our vehicles come with a certified inspection report and history reports are available for all vehicles. All of our sales staff is fully licensed. Visit SukiBathMotors.com today. Cowley & Company, car accident lawyers representing personal injury and disability victims in the Lower Mainland. A former chiropractor, Lee Cowley has more than 20 years experience as an attorney in BC. Locations include Abbotsford and Burnaby, with a head office in Surrey, on 104 Avenue at 138th Street. Marami kaming selection from all makes and models, and all trade-ins are welcome. Bago ka ba sa bansa, wala ka pang credit score, walang problema. Garantisad ang financing, plus meron kaming certified warranty technicians for all your services and repairs. Matatagpuan sa 104 and 138 and at surreymitsubishi.com. All the stories that you're going to hear tonight are personal in nature, some of which can encroach on dark topics as addiction, abuse, self-harm, and you may get triggered by them. And if you do, there is a beautiful lounge to the back of XY that you can go down, chill out, get your composure. And when you're ready, you can come and join us. I understood that at that point in time, when I really cooled down, that I valued, com I valued material things over compassion. And when, it, when I clicked into that, it's like, it's just stuff. At the end of the day, I can buy new stuff. She can tear it apart, I can buy new stuff. But if she was scared of me and can't look me in the eye anymore, then I lost a puppy. That's taken me my entire life to understand. So with that, I'm going to rewind a few months. And uh, when she was a lot smaller, and I call it the mini monster phase. Well, she, right now, she's massive. <laughs> And she was, you know, she was a lot smaller. I think this was like the, the first month I got her. And she's in her pen. I'm sitting there working, and she looks at me and starts barking and starts jumping. And I go, just, just stop it, stop it. Sits down, go back to work. Bark, 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 jump, jump, jump. I go over and say, look, just stop it. Walk back to work, jumps up, bark, 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 jump, 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 goes absolutely bonkers. I'm like. Will you just quit it? Just stop. It's actually Chris Dubay, by the That's way. That's right. Just to correct that a little bit. Hi, everybody. So. I've um, spoken on the stage a couple times before, and when Winston said, we come back, I said, can I bring him? So here we are together, and we were talking about what we might talk about, and we thought maybe we'd share a little bit about our, our relationship and, um, and what it's brought for us. So we're going to talk a little bit about what was going on for both of us before we met, and then... Um, We've each prepared a few questions for each other that the other one doesn't know about. That's right, bombshells. So it could get interesting. We'll see. <laughs> All right. I'm a cool guy. Why am I alone in this basement? God knows I'm good. God knows that I need a woman in my life. Why is this beautiful woman? You know, what's happening in my life? What's wrong with me? I, I, I'm cool. Everything is good. I think I'm ready. Uh, God knows exactly the kind of woman that I need. Wow, I met this lady and I met the other lady. Good. 
five, six ladies interested in me, and I'm thinking, okay, something is different about this guy. All of a sudden, he was happier. He used to be like a stressed guy, but just the idea of connecting with potential mates out there just shifted his whole perspective. He became a different guy. We didn't connect uh, with uh, this beautiful lady right away. One of the interesting things that happened immediately was there are so many people out there waiting to just connect, just to say hello. I got a lot of advice uh, from a wonderful woman in another place in town, and basically she gave me coaching tips. Okay, this is the things you have to watch for. <laughs> Look out for these sorts of people. <laughs> and you know, I I was very it's like thankful. It's like she took one look at him, and went, "Oh, he's going to be in trouble in here." Yeah, <laughs> just a, a, a puppy waiting for the pickings. Uh, but it didn't happen, and uh, still, for a while there, I was just uh, waiting for somebody to still show up. So, but I put out an honest outline of who I really was out there, so I really still was feeling it's important to connect with somebody really, really... Three, two, one, jump. Okay. <laughs>Models are on display at Freeway Mazda. New Mazda sedans, crossovers, and SUVs surround the facility, and fully loaded versions occupy the floor of the showroom. At Freeway Mazda, 154th Street and 104 Avenue in Surrey. Foodie World presents Philippine Street, featuring a large selection of Filipino foods. From imported non-perishable products, to both packaged seafood and locally caught and very much alive. Foodie World is 75,000 square feet of worldly groceries situated in North Richmond.